Hey guys, Nathan Brendan Masters. Game Sleuth is back and he's got a question to ask and I think it's a good one. How much would you pay for this? All right, now you guys know this is my kind of video. We're talking about pricing. So let's let's hear a little bit of this. I'm not gonna put a lot of his video uh, out here because I want you to go and uh, look at his thing, but I'm gonna give you my opinion. Games usually have a price range. $59 is the norm for a lot of brand new titles, but I highly doubt Yandere Simulator would cost $59 at release. That's just ridiculous for an indie title. I don't know. Uh, in his heyday, I think he could have got a nice amount for it. Probably not $59, no. If it's a demo, he, he gets nothing for it. But uh, if it's a console game, probably could have got at least half that, maybe 15 bucks, 25 bucks, somewhere in there. Uh, but I was always under the impression this was a PC and mobile game. As a matter of fact, it would work better as a mobile game, in my opinion. I tend to be a fan of uh, horror chase games. Uh, Emily Wants to Play was one of the first games I downloaded on my iPad. Uh, that cost me $2.99, which seems about right. And for the fan base that this game had, he could have made a nice amount of money. Remember, PewDiePie played this game, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye. Those are three heavy hitters right there. PewDiePie being obviously the, the number one, I mean, that's a lot of attention on this game. This game could have made a nice amount of money at a two ninety nine price tag. Probably couldn't move it about 15,000, 20,000 units, and that's a conservative estimate. I think he could have moved a lot more than that. A uh, hell of a lot more, especially with the amount of uh, amount of people pushing for his game and uh, the fan base being as solid as it was. I mean, it was a solid fan base. I mean, you know, right now people are more interested in the drama. And this has been said before. I'm not the only one saying this. People are more interested in the drama than they are the actual game. So, you know, he lost out on that. But I still think he could charge probably two ninety nine outright. I wouldn't charge anything more than four ninety nine for it, but two ninety nine sounds about right. That's what I've paid for most of my uh, most of my horror games. Some of you know I'm a big fan of the game Evil Nun and uh, I've ran that on my channel as well as Granny Chapter Two, which was actually a lot of fun. I think there was a, a bug or so uh in one of the updates, but I, I you know, they fixed it. So uh, I went through all of those. So if I remember correctly, they were ad supported and then you could buy the game. You know, you could remove the ads, but I think that was only evil none. I think granny still has uh, granny chapter two still has ads. And if I remember correctly, there's a lot of money that could have been made on this game that way. Again, money being left on the table is nothing new with Yandere Dev and Yandere Simulator. But we already talked about the amount of merchandising options and things he could have had. After he sold out with the first one, he could have just immediately made a Yandere Simulator Part 2. And that could have been at a different school. And, you know, again, the price tag stays at $2.99. If he wanted to, he probably could have upped it to $3.99 just because, hey, you know, it's that game that everybody's playing. And I don't know if the fans would have been thrilled about it, but uh, I think they would have been willing to pay it an extra dollar. But that's what I think people would be willing to pay for the Yandere Simulator game. I think about two ninety five to maybe four ninety five, and four ninety five might even be pushing it for a PC version, maybe nine ninety nine, somewhere in there. That's why I think would be a good price. That's why I think people would be willing to pay for the game. Remember, the game isn't just the game; it's clothing, merchandising, things of that nature. All that's important to think about because if you're talking pricing, you want to get it right because you want to get your profit margin and everything right. How much money do I want to make for the amount of time I put into this game? Well, now that six, seven years has been put into the game, uh, you know, I don't know if you can make that back without it actually being a triple A title. I mean, that's triple A game development time. And I, I know that there are other games that have taken longer than that. But, you know, for the amount of time put into this, uh, yeah, you would think that this is a $59 game, but it's, it's not. But I hope 
other developers like Dr. Apis and people working on similar games. I hope you guys are watching this. Don't make the same mistakes that Yandere Dev did, and I hope you can make a little little bit of money off of this. Maybe make a an actual living from doing something that you love to do and a, a fan base that wants what you have to offer. So you, you treat that fan base well, and uh, they'll treat you well. I mean, this started out as a crowdfunding effort. So, uh, and speaking of crowdfunding, I am also crowdfunding something. I'm crowdfunding my book, Hexcraft Mechanics, Issue 2. It's a 56-page action-based urban fantasy book written and drawn by me. So a uh, link to that is in the description if you like things like Blade, Constantine, Underworld, stuff of that nature, then you're going to love this book. Check it out on Indiegogo. And before I get out of here, guys, what's up with uh, Sarah's school life? It's still a uh, thing? Or I know he doesn't upload, the uh, developer doesn't upload uh, often. Uploads, I think, once, possibly twice a month. But uh, is that that's still going? Is that a thing? I mean, I know it's just a fan game, but a lot of these other games started out as just fan games as well. And uh, this one, you just, I don't hear a lot about it. I hear, obviously, Love Letters, the big one that everybody's kind of paying attention to right now. But uh, this one kind of fell through the cracks. So keep me, uh, keep me updated on that one. All right, guys, you take it easy. Nathan Brandon Masters, Austin. Don't look back, we're here to stay. A life we knew would come one day. And this is it. Future leaves us behind The fire will burn and never die Looking through the eyes of a brand new life It's so just